Welcome back to the New Life Recap, your weekly roundup of comings and goings on the New Life server. This week, we learn what Aquaman and Chucky have in common. Neither of them feel like doing interiors. Got it? Then let's go! Aqua Sausage dives back into his base plans this week. The King of the Ocean needs a castle to match, and that means digging around his landbound storage system for materials. To remedy the lack of aquatic accessibility in his base, Sausage dots several overgrown ponds around it to take a dip in whenever needed. But all these still and quiet ponds feel a little lonely, so Sausage heads out into the ocean to catch some fish to inhabit them. Beautiful koi, classic cotton salmon, and precious Dumbo octopi fill the ponds now. And the addition of sea bunnies is not only adorable, but nostalgic for the short-lived hair he once was. Pearl needs a few things from the end, and since the entrance is completely surrounded by short-circuiting water, the King of the Ocean offers his help, even cleaning up the bridge he makes for her. Sausage guides Pearl through the stronghold and gives a strict warning before nudging her through the portal. The talk of the end reminds Sausage of a cubozoa jellyfish he found there several weeks ago, and whilst he's unable to lead the creature around for adventures, he decides the cubozoa can be at his side on his throne, a royal pet. But for a throne, Sausage first needs a castle, so after gathering the goods and flying around in the rain a while, he gets to work. The keep rises from a grand seafloor entrance, stretching all the way up to the top of the ravine in glory of stone, deep slate, and copper. The inside is still a bit of a death trap, but at least it's a nice death trap. Scott's recovered from his own death trap, and he's come back a little, well, creepier. He's now a living doll, a patchwork poppet that burns easily, but is immune to most other indirect forms of harm, and can sew itself back together with string and wool when hurt. Some of the descriptions are a little vague, so Scott puts his new body through its paces, seeing what is and isn't a threat. So what about drowning? Can I drown? Okay, I do have bubbles. We're going down. This may seem dark, but it's just limit testing. It's fine. It's less flashy than his previous powers, but the simple things are good sometimes. For his new aesthetic, Scott wants the spook of tinted glass, so he hops into the local ravine to search out an amethyst geode he remembers from his teleporting days, a series of habits that might come back to bite him. Being able to fall down is great and all, but the getting back up is the hard part. Luckily, he always carries a waystone, so new trips to and from the geode are easy to make. Scott takes a space marked out for a different purpose and builds a classically creepy abode, complete with foreboding yet gorgeous gradient windows. What's it for? Scott doesn't know yet, which means there's no telling what horrors await. And we're gone! That wraps up the week here on New Life Recap. Thank you so much for watching, drop a like if you liked it, and subscribe if you want more. Check out the contributors in the description below, and we'll see you all next week.